Um, well, first thing, good morning. I'm glad to uh, see you here. Uh, Justin Bamberg, attorney with Bamberg Legal, uh, state representative in District 90. Um, and I'm joined here today with Shedron Williams, uh, state representative out of Hampton County. Um, and I'd like to just open with, uh, as a firm believer in the Constitution, uh, we have seen uh, numerous indictments as it relates to Alex Murdoch, uh, Russell Lafitte, and Corey Fleming. And of course, uh, everyone is innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Um, yesterday was a, a big day, a bittersweet day, um, and Ms. Pinckney wanted to be here today. Um, the accident that she was involved in that brings us to this point was very, very, very bad. Uh, she had well over 15 surgeries and unfortunately has suffered from chronic pain since 2009. And the stress of all of this, she woke up this morning and she just could not make the trip. Uh, she had to take her medication. Um, but what Ms. Pinckney said to me this morning, uh, she apologized. And she said, you know, I'm sorry I let you down, Mr. B. And uh, she feels like she let the supporters down, the people who supported her and who wanted to hear from her. And I told her, it's okay. And that's just one thing that makes this such a purely infuriating situation to be in is these are really, really amazing people who live through something really traumatic. And to see them get taken advantage of this way is just terrible. Um, you know, what we see and what, what everyone will receive later are the receipts, for lack of better words. Um, this is a lot of money that was moving. And there are checks, there are money orders, there are receipts, literally. And what we see is, for example, and I still, pe people have to answer these questions. Why did $100,000 of my client's money that was supposed to be for their pain and for the loss of a, a, a loved one, why did that go to Charlie the Jr.? There's another check, almost $330,000 that went to Richard Murdoch III. Why? Why was their money used to book a private plane to fly to the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. It's cold, it's callous. Um, you're seeing the banking industry uh, being used as a tool to effectively funnel money. And there is so much, you know, we catch flag sometimes, that Mr. Bamber, you talk too much. But here's the thing, we're talking about the legal system and its integrity. And as a practicing attorney, that's something I do take very serious. People have to be able to trust their lawyers in the state of South Carolina, period. There are no and, ifs, or buts. And trust was broken here. People need to be able to trust our state's banking institutions. No and, ifs, or buts. When you go in and there's paperwork, or you put your money in that bank, or you're sent to that bank, by your attorney to borrow money, you shouldn't be getting charged 29% interest. You shouldn't. It's unconscionable, some of the interest rates that were being charged, and it's all about people looking out for themselves instead of looking out for the people that they owe a duty to. The systems matter, and we hope that during the course of this, the integrity in these systems will be renewed uh, we want people to have faith in these systems and people want justice to be done. You know, the Pinckney family, Ms. Thomas, Mr. Bush, Mr. Risher, Mr. Anderson, Ms. Blondell Gary, rest in peace, her family. These people deserve nothing but closure and for the right thing to be done. Period. Mr. Lafitte has not even uttered two simple words. I'm sorry, I let you down. That's it. How hard is that to just say, I, I was the conservator, I was the one who was supposed to be in charge of the money and look out for your best interest, and I didn't do that, and I'm sorry. That is not that hard. 
right? And it doesn't mean that in the court of law he's going to be found guilty or innocent or anything. That's just decency. It is what it is. And all the documents that will be out, you know, these are the things that form the basis of in, uh, of indictments. These are the things that, that show what was going on. This can never, never happen again in, in our state. It can't. And if everything works as we were hoping it does and the system does its job, there will be accountability, right? There will be change. Other institutions, right? Not just Palmetto State Bank, other banks may take a look at their own policies. You know, again, 11 years ago, Russell Lafitte was not the CEO of the bank. He was not the chair of the board. He was an employee. He was a vice president at that bank. Who was, who was watching the employee? to the tune that millions of dollars can get misappropriated at the hands of Alec Murdoch. You know, so uh, on behalf of the Pinckney family, on behalf of all the, the victims um, who, are, who are waiting on their day in court, um, we just ask that people keep them in their thoughts and prayers. Um, and, and quite frankly, even to, um, you know, members of the Murdoch family, members of the Lafitte family, Right. This thing has touched a lot of lives. The actions of some have impacted a lot of lives, and there are a lot of people who are going through it. Um, and, you know, we just got to let this thing ride out. We're going to see what happens. Um, but at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Bamberg. Again, uh, I'm Shedron Williams. I represent the House District 122. I am a resident of Hampton County myself. Uh, I just bring words today to say that some of, or pretty much maybe we would like to say, the allegations and the information that has been brought forward to investigate does not paint a total picture of Hampton County or the citizens of Hampton County. And you know, here in the state of South Carolina, we have a judicial system that allows peace and balance. and. Uh, so what I want to say today is let's allow the system to uh, take a look at what's going on because we all know that in this state we represent individuals and we definitely hold a high standard that you are innocent until proven guilty. And I just want to continue and air off of what Mr. Bamberg has said earlier for the victims and, and the families that's involved. You know. Um, we live there. We're a great place, and there's great people in Hampton County. So again, you know, this is not the picture that's been etched in stone of what we know of Hampton County. It's a situation that has to be dealt with. It's going to be dealt with through the court system, and I ask that we allow this to happen. Thank you. Representative Bamberg, you said the banking industry, the banking institutions should not be allowed to funnel money, but you didn't complete the sentence. Funnel money to who? From who? Well, what we see and, and, and what the records, the receipts show. All right, Russell Lafitte would be appointed conservator over someone's money. So for example, uh, my client Malik Williams, Russell Lafitte was appointed conservator over Malik, okay? Mr. Lafitte would then, in that instance, he loaned Malik's money to Alec, okay? That loan was repaid the very next month with money that was misappropriated from the Pinckney family. So what we see is a whole bunch of uh, taken from Peter, given to Paul, and then taken from Jake to give back to Peter, okay? And that's inappropriate, it's a breach of trust. Oh. You're saying in, in, insider dealing for personal benefit. Absolutely, it's absolutely insider dealing. Everyone benefited from the actions, except the people who are supposed to be the beneficiary, right? And that is the big, pro that is one of the biggest problems here, okay? Is, and, and I hate, I, I hate, and maybe it's because I was raised of modest means in a very uh, poor place. I hate this idea that white collar crime is not as bad as other stuff. It is, it is. You're talking about Mr. Lafitte, Mr. Murdoch, that benefited from 
what, 100 years of family generational wealth, right? No one's mad at that. No one's mad at that. I want that for my kids. The reason why I work so hard is because when Justin Mamrick has a child, I want to be able to give my child a better life. That is how it is supposed to be. But when you are misappropriating this amount of money, you're not just... It's not just money. These are not just names on paper. These are not just a sad picture of a young man who's a quadriplegic in a nursing home. These, you are depriving them of the opportunity to build generational wealth and enjoy some of the same things that you've been fortunate enough to have because of your daddy and his daddy and his daddy. Or your mama and her mama and her mama, right? right. You're, it impacts not just the victims now, it impacts those who will come after them. And that is why we're fighting so hard here because there are so many people who've always felt as though uh, the privilege gets special benefit. On April 11th of this year, Mr. Lafitte put his house up for sale. Almost $550,000 it was listed at. On April 14th, Mr. Lafitte was apparently indicted. Those indictments were sealed. That's three days after the house is listed for sale. I'm not saying what it is, I just know what it looks like to me. What does it look like to you? It looks like somebody knew I'm about to be in trouble and I gotta do what I gotta do to protect myself. Again, putting self over the right thing, right? Just six days ago, apparently, and it, you, you can search online, it's on Facebook, Apparently, six days ago, Mr. Lafitte enjoyed a pleasant afternoon of turkey hunting. Meanwhile, Ms. Pinckney, who hasn't even gotten so much as an I'm sorry from the person who was conservator over her, just now deceased son's estate, is sitting at home taking prescription pain medicine because she suffers from chronic pain syndrome. Right? Even as of right now, he has not been booked, fingerprinted, seen the inside of a jail cell or anything, right? I have friends, personal friends, who have been charged and processed and the system applies to them, right? And I do want to commend the South Carolina Attorney General's Office, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, all of the agencies who are involved in, in continuing to delve into all the things they need to, right? to prosecute, to bring charges where they're warranted, right? And to leave no stone unturned. That is a commendable thing. We trust them. Ms. Pinckney trusts them that they will continue to do that. But when I see an individual and I see these things happening, April 11th, house for sale, find out yesterday on April 14th, indictment, and now it's public, it looks so obvious that unfortunately even to this day despite the pain that has been caused so many people some folks only care about themselves it's selfish in my opinion and it's hurtful to these people right and, it, and it's not right you know why news of the indictments was kept secret for for three weeks or so? i don't know I generally my understanding is generally speaking when the grand jury does indict uh, get, depending on the case, those indictments can't actually be sealed. I know the United States government does that a lot. Um, that I don't exactly know. Um, you know, we're happy to see it happen. Um, and again, even though innocent until proven guilty, uh, we look forward to seeing what happens throughout the process of criminal prosecution. Where do you think it's bond ought to be? But also, let's have, let some of these other people ask questions. Uh, Representative Bamberg, obviously, you know, Alec Murdoch has claimed that he's, he has no money to pay back these alleged victims of his. Um, you know, how uh, how confident are you that your clients will be paid back? Well, somebody saying they don't have enough money to fix something they broke is a personal problem for them. I don't care. I mean, if, and if, if there's nothing there, then we'll go and we'll do what we got to do in that regard, you know. But I, we've there's a pattern here through through statements made uh, from lawyers 
on behalf of clients who are facing charges. Um, everybody's not a victim of Alex Murdoch. They're not. Alex Murdoch is not a victim. Corey Fleming is not a victim. Russell Lafitte is not a victim. We're, we're not talking about, we're talking about educated, successful, powerful, influential, wealthy people. You don't, you don't go and win $10 million cases and then because you get caught doing some dumb stuff, you just get to play dumb. That's not how this works. You don't rise to the level of being CEO of a bank worth almost a billion dollars. You don't rise to that level. You don't rise to the level of being the president of the Independent Bankers Association. You don't rise to that level and then because you get caught up in some dumb stuff, you get to play dumb. But that's not how this works. So you got all these people who have consistently been trying to say that they got duped by a friend or that they are a victim of Alec and his bamboozling everybody. And that is unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? And again, um, we are fighting for the criminal justice side of things, but we're also fighting on the civil side because things do need to make, be made right. And on the civil side, the only tool we have is financial compensation. And we're gonna fight for that. And it'll come from wherever it's gotta come from. Is there any word on a hearing for these charges and indictments yesterday? Do we know when that might take place? That I'm not sure. Um, I, I believe it may be Friday, okay. uh, but I'm not 100% certain as of yet. You know, another question I had is, you know, these cases now or these alleged crimes now go back 10 years for Alec Murdoch, if not further. I mean, at what point does this stop? I mean, do we think that there's going to be more alleged victims? Do we think there's more crimes? I mean, how concerning is that for, you know, the legal system in South Carolina, the banking system in our state? Um, I think it depends on paperwork. You know, uh, so the system that's in place, attorneys, uh, firms are required to keep case files back but there's a there's a limit you don't have to keep them into perpetuity at some point the files are purged right the banking system the same thing applies at some point you're not required to keep records so my belief based on the actions i am seeing in the uh studiousness of the south carolina attorney general's office and the investigating officers is that if there is paperwork it will be brought to light and of course during the course of our investigation if we find something, it will be brought to light. We are going to, and I need, hear me, we are going to restore the integrity of the legal profession through the course of this entire ordeal. And I have to say this, um, Eric Bland and the work that he did in uh, representing the Satterfields and in bringing a lot of stuff to light I talked to Eric a good bit. He's a friend of mine and he is he did a phenomenal job. Without him, we don't get here today. Right? And I have to say, you know, Mandy Matney, Fitz News, the work that they did in putting certain stuff out. We don't get here today without that. Everybody's got to do their part. This is a public interest thing. Right? This is Everything that goes on in the criminal case, everything that goes on on the civil side will impact the public. What the regulators do on the banking side, what reporters do, everything will determine what our future looks. We can't change the past. And where people did wrong, they should be held accountable. But what we can do is dictate what type of future we wanna have. And that is a big part of this entire process. Who be sending out those receipts and documents today, or do you know when we might get those? Yeah, they should be. They should be on the way. Okay, including the, for the baseball trip. Um, so in there, there are certain things now that we we still don't have access to. Okay, 
uh, but you will see, for example, um, conversions to cash for certain amounts. Uh, you will see money orders, for example, made payable to Palmetto State Bank, drawn on a Palmetto State Bank trust account at PMPED. Uh, you will see payments made to, for example, Murdoch Charters. You will see a $10,000 payment that was made to Maggie Murdoch. Right. So you'll see a lot of stuff in there, uh, but obviously there are going to be things that law enforcement and the prosecutors have that we're not privy to. Has Pamela testified before the uh, state grand jury or the federal grand jury? Let's just say that Ms. P has been heard. By the federals as well as the state? Ms. Ms. P has been heard. Her words are being heard. Is the, Good try. <laughs> is the chartered flight, is that among one of the most egregious expenses that this money was used on? I mean, can you kind of get into like some of the it, most? It's not that it's one of the most egregious expenses, right? Uh, because there are misappropriations that monetarily are far greater than that. You know, when, when you're talking about 300 and $29,500 that should have gone to taking care of these people and it, and it goes somewhere else. Um, so the amounts vary, you know, and I just don't, I can't comprehend how for over a decade it wasn't caught. The systems failed. And we just got to make sure that it doesn't fail again. And you mean the legal systems and the banking regulatory systems, or what systems? Are Absolutely. You talking about? Both of them. The the legal system failed. The banking, regulatory, and oversight process and review process failed. And people failed. It's exactly how we ended up here. Uh, so thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.